Downtown Evansville today is recognized for many things, whether it be the courthouse, the Ford Center, or the riverfront. Recently, it's become known for its endless improvement efforts, determined to renovate and recreate within the confines of its own downtown sector. The climax of these renovation projects so far took place on November 21st, 2021 at 7 a.m., when the tallest building within a 150 mile radius, the 420 Main Building, was imploded to make room for further renovations. The 420 Main Building was a mere shadow of its former self. However, its journey to such a poor condition wasn't a quick one. There was not a single moment that marked doom for the building. It simply withered away, slowly and quietly. A lack of local support and interest, as well as an antiquated design and lack of sufficient maintenance left the building to deteriorate, thus lacking the appeal to draw on new tendons. Despite the iconic status of the tower, the city made very few efforts to demonstrate their appreciation, and it was no longer fit to stand as a part of Evansville's skyline. The general public's perception of the building was incredibly positive, and the building was considered to be treasured by many. It was an icon of Evansville's skyline. To the city, the building was once a symbol of commerce, strength, and wealth. However, these values in relation of this old relic to the local community seemed to be diminishing. In the years leading up to its demolition, it sat almost completely empty with cracked windows, leaking ceilings, and a quickly deteriorating interior. The story of 420 Main at its heart is a story of the most significant efforts to revitalize and bring people back downtown, both in Evansville's history and its future. In order to dive deep into the history of the 420 Main building itself, we must look at the history of one of its largest tenants and a driving force in the tower's initial success, the old National Bank. While the building at 420 Main might be one of the most iconic and well-known of Evansville's buildings, it definitely wasn't the first impressive building under the occupancy of Old National Bank. The bank's first two offices, for their time, were highly regarded for their design and architectural merit. Built in 1834, the first office of the bank certainly was more plain than any of its successors. As a neoclassical structure standing at two stories, it was much smaller than any building that replaced it, but at heart truly conveyed the bank's stature and opulence, just as the current office does today. After nearly a century, the bank made its first move in 1916 to the 400 block of Main Street, the design of the 1916 office was even more impressive than its predecessor, and it was certainly more reflective of the design trends of the time. Architecture of the original building from 1916 to 1970 um, is, is pretty interesting because it was considered a skyscraper at the time, even though it was only eight stories tall. And it, if you kind of look at a classical column, it has three parts to it. It has a base, it has a middle, and it has a cap. And the original building uh, modeled that. It had a base which had some arches and then it had a, a central middle part that had a group of windows and then it had a cap to top it off. And what's interesting is that building is not where the 420 Main building was. It's, it was right beside it and it stayed there during the construction of the 420 Main Tower and then it was removed in the park that's at 4, 4th and Main uh, that's the site of the original building. It was well regarded for shape, design, and structure, but by the late 1960s, Evansville, an old national bank, was in need of an update, which came in the form of a brand new, fully modern building. The building being planned brought new opportunity for massive changes, not only for old national, but the entire city of Evansville. One of the things there that really changed with the, the bank building, um, up until the time old national was built, the largest building in Evansville was a grain silo. It would be inspired by many contemporary designs along the East Coast and would jolt Evansville city center into the zeitgeist to the late 1960s. So the appearance of the uh, 420 Main building from an exterior and interior standpoint uh, was, is to me very interesting because it fit a specific time period in architectural history. In the 1950s in New York City, there was a building called the Lever House, okay? And it's very unique because it was a horizontal base that was probably two or three stories tall and all glass, and then it was this tall rectangular uh, glass building, and nobody had ever seen anything like that. Well, 20 years after that, when the 420 Main Building was built, it modeled that, but instead of having a three-story uh, structure that this rectangular glass box sat on, um, it had a five-story structure that was a parking garage. And then our glass box sat basically on top of that. And on top of the parking garage was originally a outdoor patio in a way. 
for the bank employees to go out and use. It was the perfect revitalization project, not only for Evansville as a city, but Old National Bank, which would gain a spacious and modern tower to project its power and authority. Just after completion of the Evansville Civic Center earlier in the year, Old National Bank officials planned to begin a project of their own, a new headquarters that would become the tallest building not only in Evansville, but in the region, thanks to major changes in the city building code. Um, back in August of 1967, um, there was an article in the Evansville Press um, asking if anybody wanted to build a 30-story office building because they had, um, at the city council, a, an ordinance had been proposed to raise the building limit for Evansville. Uh, up until that point, a 10-story building was as big as you could build in the city. And at the time, they were just kind of laughed it off that, you know, who's going to build something. It all started with the announcement of the project on October 20th, 1967, at the Hotel McCurdy. During a meeting of old National Bank executives to discuss their plans of a new headquarters that would allow them to keep up with the times, both in business and style. Just a few months later, on the chilly morning of December 15th, 1967, Leland Feigl, the Chamber of Commerce president, Ben Evans, an old national employee and city councilman, and Walter A. Schlechty, the old National Bank chairman, turned over first bits of dirt for the building's construction in a groundbreaking ceremony. From that moment, construction had officially begun on the soon-to-be crown jewel of the Evansville skyline. Almost two years later, as construction neared completion on the tower, a topping-out ceremony was held on May 24, 1969. It was a day of festivity around the downtown area, and as the main event of the day, builders took part in a centuries-old Scandinavian tradition of topping their project with a large evergreen tree, which was raised to the roof using a crane. The spectacle of the ceremony continued with a balloon drop that rained several $5 gift certificates to local businesses down to the ground. Uh, from the top of the building, they dropped balloons with the gift certificates, and basically it almost turned into a riot. You had people climbing all over cars and everything else trying to get these the gift certificates. And, and it, it, it would be laughable today there because it was things where like you got a gallon of paint at Sears or you got the, it wasn't like you were getting big bucks or anything there. The day finished with open houses in both the main areas of the old National Bank Tower, as well as the newly completed Civic Center. The building would not officially open for another eight months. They took down all the crane work and stuff during the summer. Um, in December of uh, 1969, then they had a grand unopening there instead of a grand opening there. Uh, the bank itself was opened, uh, they moved in, but since the building wasn't finished, they didn't have a formal grand opening ceremony. Um, at the time there, and they kept trying to uh, downplay the opening. Uh, as soon as the bank opened then, uh, they cleared the, uh, the building next door, uh, the 1916 Old National Bank. They cleared that out, demolished that, and then they proceeded to put what uh, was mostly parking garage on that location. Uh, that continued then until about uh, May or June of 1971 when they, they finally finished the building completely. The plans for the bank's future headquarters detailed a completely modern office building reaching 18 stories and 248 feet tall, complete with all the revolutionary technologies and comforts becoming available in the late 1960s. Located directly next to the 1916 office, which was raised in the 1970s to accommodate the tower's lower parking structure. It featured many interior design trends of the time, focused on displaying the wealth and opulence of the company, and as a result, passed those feelings along to its members. From an interior standpoint, it was very mid-century modern. Uh, you would walk in, and if you walked into the bank office, or the, the public bank branch, uh, the main bank branch, uh, there was carpet, uh, terrazzo, uh, wood paneling, uh, very sleek and very modern for the time. Uh, you'd go to the elevator and, and the elevators were uh, wood paneled and, and polished metal and very sleek and, and modern. And um, the offices then were very standard in the middle. In many ways, the building was certainly a product of the time period and reflected the major changes taking place in architecture. Beneath all the cosmetic features, an equally impressive structural design maintained the building's stature. What's interesting about the structure itself is uh, it was a complete concrete structure. So there were these columns that formed basically the skeleton of the building. It was column, concrete columns and concrete floor plates and everything was supported off of that skeleton. When you look at 
photographs of the 420 main building, the, the glass panels and the metal panels that form the skin, those are all just hanging off that surface. And when you look at those photos, you see these concrete fins that create these vertical lines on the building. And what those do is those would kind of reinforce your, your vision upwards, okay? But those were all just decoration. They weren't integral to the structure. They didn't support anything. They were just simply decorations. The tower at 420 Main represented an opportunity for Old National. It gave them the space, but also the look they needed to draw in partners and members. The modern construction and design gave prospective members the feeling of opulence and wealth, important to a bank attempting to convince the public and investors of its financial success and security. Uh, it was gorgeous, obviously a, a big lobby, uh, uh, you know, uh, we occupied uh, quite a few floors. Uh, the executive floors were on the sixth floor, uh, and they did a great job. Uh, it was all new, of course, but uh, uh, new designs, and, and it was a beautiful building, yes. It also provided plenty of space for workers and customers. Yet, the tower still had room to accommodate smaller ventures, such as offices for other companies, and two floors dedicated to the famous Petroleum Club. The Petroleum Club was one of the most exclusive venues in Evansville until it closed its doors in 2006 shortly after Old National Bank left the building, citing declining business as the reason for its closure. At its peak, it was constantly bustling with the presence of Evansville's elite, CEOs, company presidents, and the area's most prominent businessmen, even topping 900 members in some years. Its traditional and lavish styling far differed from the more modern layout of the lower floors, creating an obvious contrast as soon as you entered. It's where businessmen and leaders met over lunch to finalize deals, and also where those same leaders met to socialize on weekends. Its great altitude was certainly reflective of the high esteem with which it was held by the city. I taught night school at the University of Evansville. I had a class of 15. Probably two weeks before we moved into the new building, the TAR, uh, I asked the general contractor if I could bring my 15 students down for a tour, and he agreed to it. And to see the, the reaction of the students to the building. But what really stood out in my mind, I still think about it, when we got on the elevator and went up to the 18th floor and we got off the elevator, of course it was a huge big open area, which was to be the Petroleum Club. And uh, of course none of that was in yet, it was just, but the, as they all looked out the windows one direction, the other direction across the city, they could not believe the view. So. It, it was breathtaking to them that day, and of course when we opened it, our customers always loved to go to the Petroleum Club and look out at the beautiful view. When it closed its doors in 2006 due to a lack of business after Old National Bank's departure from the tower, it was regarded as a great loss to Evansville. There was simply no other venue around town that created such a timeless and elegant atmosphere as the Petroleum Club. The massive renovations and downtown improvements were not only consolidated to the 420 Main Building. Projects like the Civic Center and the conversion of Main Street into a pedestrian walkway were also underway in the late 1960s. The Civic Center was the first major project of many with the intent to revive downtown spirit of community and bring commerce to the area. It was meant to unify all the major administration groups under one roof and define a city center. City leadership and local business owners wanted to bring people back downtown and projects like these seemed the perfect way to accomplish this. As 420 Main was being designed and as construction reviewed, many within the city were attempting to bring another project to life. It would change the feel of downtown and hopefully bring it into the modern era, transforming downtown to the hub of commercial shopping. It would also change the traffic flow, hoping to bring more people into the heart of the city. This project was the Main Street Walkway. Its main objective, to create a downtown pedestrian mall, pulling people and their money back to the heart of the city. Construction would begin in April of 1971, and the walkway officially opened in October of the same year. While Evansville's leaders thought bringing multiple projects together to revitalize downtown was sure to bring a success, more projects seem only to bring more problems. The new Civic Center blocked much of the traffic access to the walkway as it completely cut off Main Street at one end. This, combined with insufficient and faraway parking and the already cramped nature of downtown, brought the practicality of the walkway into question. Everything didn't happen. Uh, you ended up, you know, Main Street redevelopment, uh, the walkway, different things there that um, 
you know, started out as good ideas, but then, you know, didn't work out. But that, that had part to do with the way downtowns were changing people moving to the suburbs. Their, uh, your downtown shopping district becomes malls on the east side. The new millennium brought the death of another mid-century revitalization project, the Main Street Walkway. In 2006, the plan for the pedestrian mall was abandoned due to its impracticality, as well as the decline in the downtown retail climate, and Main Street was reopened to vehicular traffic. The way the Main Street looks today is almost where they settled. There were periods of pedestrianization where there was an attempt to, to turn the downtown into a mall. Um, and, and some sources actually refer to the Evansville Main Street as being a mall. Um, but none of these really took hold because I think the forces that were driving these commercial changes were much bigger forces than any one community could, could change. While it became clear that the walkway would never achieve the success city planners had hoped for by the late 90s, a similar fate was developing at 420 Main. The building was massive and displayed the bigger and better outlook for Evansville's future, but its size also meant that it had a higher standard of maintenance, which was not being met. Inside, the building had barely been touched since the 1970s. Much of its interior was severely dated and in dire need of updates and modern features to attract more tenants and to appease those already in the building. But these updates never came. Um, I was in that building in the early 2000s and it was almost like you were walking into a cave there. I mean, the downstairs floors were empty there. You know, the place you could, you know, the carpet was coming up. Uh, you know, it just was not being taken care of. Renovations that did occur did little to stem the tide, and soon leaks appeared and minor structural issues became apparent, both problems that only grew as time took its toll on the massive structure. The story of the 420 main building's decline can be wrapped up in one simple phrase, too little, too late. The building's vacancies weren't being rented out, causing a lack of revenue that further contributed to its lack of maintenance. By 2004, Old National Bank left 420 main for a brand new headquarters on Riverside Drive. Two years later, the Petroleum Club exited as well, permanently closing due to a major decline in business and membership after the old National Bank left the tower, taking with it the lunchtime business deals and client meetings that had become the foundation of the club's business. With its two anchor businesses gone, the building's smaller occupants also began to leave. While the tower wouldn't be imploded until 17 years after Old National's exit, their leaving certainly marked doom on the tower unless another their business moved in, a dream that never came to fruition despite multiple attempts to revive the tower. Despite attracting law firms and other small businesses, the tower would not bring in another large, long-term tenant like Old National Bank. The opportunity and hope 420 Main Building had once inspired had vanished. It was a shell of its former self. There were many plans proposed to save the tower, but all required considerable funds and local interest to make them feasible. In the end, it was decided that the best option was to demolish the tower and make way for an entirely new structure. Uh, I thought it was probably a good idea. Uh, I, I don't think anyone would spend the money to make it right. And I, I think once it got so bad, uh, and about the only way you can do that kind of building is to implode it. Uh, when I watched the TV that morning, did I feel a little, uh, I don't know, it does make you feel a little, a little sad, yeah. Uh, spent a lot of years of my life there. And also, when you think about the top of it, the Petroleum Club, which was very popular, uh, very good for the bank because our customers liked it and we used it a lot. And uh, so, yes, I felt a little sad that day when I saw it fall into the ground. The, the future plans for the site are pretty exciting. I mean, uh, it's still a transformational project for downtown Evansville in that uh, it's not a tower, but the only thing that was going for the previous building was that it, its height was very unique and there was an excitement about that. Instead of a tall building that's, that's you know, 18 stories tall, now we're building on three quarters of the block. And the one quarter that's left is a city park which Centerpoint has donated money to. It's really working out very nicely where the lower, the main ground floor level of the building is restaurants that open directly to the park and directly to Main Street. And there's also a food hall that opens directly to the, the park. And so the park is really the, the, the glue of, of that whole um, area. But you'll have in that park um, places for families to spend time during nice weather but in the wintertime, 
um, this oval uh, outdoor space becomes an ice rink so people will be drawn to downtown because they'll be able to ice skate and there's a there's a musical there's a pavilion for uh, bands to play so in the in the summer every week there could be different bands playing but uh, during Christmas time there's a place for Santa to be up on the stage so that that park creates a lot of activity. Well, what has been proposed may not exactly be a memorial to the tower, but it is certainly a nod to Evansville's future, and while also reflecting the past. My main disappointment is you take an 18-story building and you replace it with a six-story and a four-story building. Um, it just seems like it's a lot of waste, but it's just you would have thought, if you're thinking ahead, you would have replaced it with something, you know, not not necessarily the same size, but you know something of the same scale there that's that's impressive there rather than you know just you know two buildings that when you look coming across the river or or you know any direction in town, these two buildings aren't going to show up on 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 the picture there. You know, four twenty main, I think is is symbolic of the optimism of the time. You know, I think a sign of of tremendous optimism, a sign of yes, we have to do some creative destruction, but look what we're gonna get in its place. And then, you know, over the course of the next 50 years, 420 Main fulfills its promise, I suppose. It was, a, it, was a, it was a place to be in the beginning, and people loved being up at the top of it, and it was an office space for, for thousands of people over the years. And then eventually it became obsolete itself. As historians, I think we sometimes have to remember that, that we tend to want to preserve and we tend to want to cling to what's there already. Uh, and sometimes we are not quite so good at looking at the potential of what could be there in the future. Um, and so I think the, the history of Evansville in terms of the redevelopment of, of this part of the city is, is both a, a warning to us in terms of beware of what you can lose when you're doing this, but it's also a warning to us in terms of don't hold on to something just for the sake of it because the future might be brighter if we go in a different direction. And I think Evansville makes that case, both these cases pretty well. The current push from the city to bring life back into downtown through a variety of revitalization projects is definitely reminiscent of the 1960s movement. The main focus then was recapturing the hearts and minds of the public and pulling people back downtown, just like today's plan. The new buildings and walkways proposed and brought in during the 1960s rhyme with Hafer's idea to introduce new parks, shops, and restaurants, making it an overall community space. The end goal is to bring people together, downtown. While projects like these have fallen short of their potential in the past, the city is hopeful that its current efforts will prove effective and do what past projects had failed to accomplish, bringing a true sense of community into downtown Evansville. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.